leave no one untouched. Touch everybody tonight. And surely it is honorable for the Lord to allow us into his presence and especially pray for somebody around us. It's a marvelous thing that God has done when he allowed us to intercede on behalf of others. That's a marvelous thing. And as I watched it tonight and I saw the great intercession that brings people from the dead. And death is supposed to be the greatest enemy of all, most powerful defeat of all. And if the Lord can certainly raise somebody from the dead through someone's intercession, then surely he can put money in your pocket. He can. Surely he can calm the nerves of a mean boss. I want you to squeeze the person just a little bit. That's a real person you're touching, someone who feels what you feel, goes through what you go through, experience what you experience. And somehow God has allowed you to go through some things so that you can bless somebody in prayer. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you tonight. We thank you. We magnify you. We sublimate. We exalt. We lift up your holy name. And we thank you for this privilege, God, to be in your house one more time. We thank you for the person we're touching. We thank you, Lord, because every embarrassment will be a testimony. Every circumstance of difficulty will be a praise of your great glory. So I pray for my neighbor's children. I pray for their home. I pray for their jobs. I pray for their circumstances, their situations. I pray for their finances. I pray, Lord, that you will bless them in every way and everything they touch. So I press into these hands power. I press into these hands a fresh anointing. I press into these hands greater vision. I press into these hands a second move of the Holy Ghost. Give them a double portion of your spirit and move a second time, a third time, a fourth time, a fifth time. Have your way tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I claim the victory right now. I command you to be blessed. I command you to be an overcomer. I command you to go higher. I command you to be all that God would have you to be in Jesus name give God a praise he's worthy of all of our praises you may be seated in the presence of the Lord surely tonight we honor God just for the privilege of being here and and very especially to the Honorable Bishop Thomas D Jakes and amen we give God praise for him Amen, 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 amen. Oh, give God some praise for this great visionary. We're thanking God for him tonight. We're just thanking God for him tonight. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, we've been blessed by him. And, and surely tonight we honor the Lord for all of the great retinue of preachers and ministries that are present here tonight. It's just good to have such a plethora of great women of God and men of God. It's just, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, <laughs> it's just marvelous to be in the house of the Lord and to all of you that are present and it's, it's just great. Great musicians, great everything. When you come to the potter's house, everything is great. It's marvelous. It's lovely. It's warm. Amen. So much love in this house and, and we honor God for that. We thank God for that. Now, uh, I have never struggled so, so uh, profusely as I struggled about what I need to do tonight. You know, I mean, I just struggled and, and <laughs> it was interesting because what I wanted to do uh, was talk about, and I sounded real West Indian right there, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, what, I what I wanted to do, yeah. What I wanted to do was talk a little bit about, about Joseph tonight. And then I said to myself, well, but, uh, and I was told, uh, how are you gonna talk about Joseph? <laughs> in, a, in a woman's conference, you know, in the God's leading ladies conference, and here I come in talking about Joseph, but uh, that's, that's what I struggle with, you know. Uh, so, <laughs> I just want to talk about Joseph. And uh, so as I debated it, you know, sometimes 
you don't, I don't always hear exactly what God wants me to do. You know, sometimes I just don't always get, hey, I don't always know. Uh, I believe it's God, but then sometimes I miss like everybody else. I just don't know. And uh, so I thought tonight uh, I would, uh, in, in keeping with God's leading lady, uh, go to the book of Judges tonight and uh, talk a little bit about Deborah. And, uh, maybe, But I don't know. I really. <laughs> I just. Amen. Uh, while while I figure that out, uh, I, we brought some tapes tonight, and uh, and uh, uh, there's a wonderful fresh oil series that I've been doing. It's a ten tape uh, series, and 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 surely there is nothing like the word of God to lift you. There is nothing like the word of God to lift you and to strengthen you. And uh, I, I was thinking as I, I brought another tape on temptation, and it's, it's interesting just how, how all of us, no matter what our spiritual level is, all of us have to deal with being tempted. Uh, and uh, sometimes I ask God, I said, Lord, I, I wish you would just disconnect the flesh. Do, 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 have you ever felt like that? Just... Just, Lord, just disconnect it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to pray my way through, trying to fast my way through, reading the scriptures and, and just trying to stay steadfast. And every time you look around, something has got your attention. And then now you've got to fight through it. And then, and then sometimes you've got to say no to what you want. See, see a, whole lot of folk, a whole lot of folk get victory quickly over what they don't want. Oh yeah, testify real loud and talk real strong. How oh, the Lord, how the Lord kept me, glory. Over what you didn't want. Amen. And, 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 and it seems as if it seems as if the, the, the higher the Lord takes you, the more intense the temptations come. And, and, and even though you, you, you make it through, sometimes you barely make it through because the flesh does not let go easily. So I, I, brought a, I brought a very, very, very graphic and very truthful presentation of temptation. And you can't teach that subject and not become transparent. You, you can't hide on that subject. So I brought that to bless you. And, and uh, then I brought the other side of your pain. The, the blessing is on the other side of your pain. I want to be blessed, but... I got to go through something. And oftentimes, what I got to go through is now, and the blessing is later, and I want to go around it. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I want to go around this. I want what you have for me, Lord, but I don't want to go through here to get it. Uh, just, just put me to sleep, and, and just when I wake up, let it be there. Uh, it doesn't work like that you, you just got to go through because while he's preparing the blessing for you he's preparing you for the blessing so the next time you don't lose it uh, if you stop by uh, the table you'll be blessed uh, I'm going to go into judges and I want you to give me as much levity and freedom as, as, as you will allow and don't hold me too tightly to the hermeneutics of the text uh, and, and uh, if my homiletics is a little off it's because I'm divided between Deborah and Joseph <laughs> but in, in Judges chapter 4 in Judges chapter 4 and of course also brought God's gonna make you laugh and he is uh, verse 1 the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them 
into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor. And the captain of hosts was Sisera, which dwelt in Harasheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron and 20 years. He mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinaim, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulon. And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him unto thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, surely I will surely go with thee, and notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah rose and went with back to Kadesh. Can you say amen? amen. I want you to look at somebody and say, a godly woman oh. makes the difference. Amen. A godly woman makes the difference. And if I were, if, 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 if I were going to, to talk to Deborah, I would, my subject would probably be, uh, I'll go if you bring the anointing. <laughs> <laughs> it's critical and, uh, to, to understand that God, and if I don't hoop tonight, uh, don't feel bad. It, it's critical to understand that God has to raise special people up for special times. And, and, and one of the things that is quite significant about that is that the times oftentimes dictate the strength of the people God has his hand on. I would not want to suggest that God is behind the curve on this in that he made some appraisal of the times and then he decided upon appraising the times that I need to go to search for someone who can deliver and lead to a new dimension. I don't want to suggest that. Because God already has all the information about what circumstance he's going to need someone in before the circumstance ever comes. He, he, he operates to you and I, we pick up the vibe of God's hand upon us in time. But God actually put his hand on us before time began. Because God does not get new information. He does not add to his repertoire of knowledge. He already has all knowledge at all times. So God has prefigured who he will put his hand on for a particular time and season and because his counsel is immutable once he has designated to grasp someone he never changes his mind it's critical here and I'm, I'm still fighting with this Joseph thing but nevertheless uh, it, it's critical because everybody who is gifted was gifted before they were born. And this is why the enemy cannot in any way 
deny you the privilege of the expression of your gift because the only way for him to deny you the privilege of the expression of your gift is to go back into eternity and disconnect God's mind from you. I, I, I hope you see this. The, 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 the God then has prepared warriors for fighting times. And whenever you feel the move of God in your life, it didn't just happen because of the times. God prepared you for the time before the time ever came into existence. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. You see, you, you see, you see the power of that is, is, is based upon the fact, uh, and, and I'm trying not to preach, is that uh, <laughs> once God designates you for the time, it is still shrouded in mystery. And then the word there from the Greek uh, would be masterion. It is, in, it is in mystery. Because nobody could seek into the mind of God what God does not reveal. You see, nobody could seek into the mind of God. And uh, to give an example, uh, Joseph. Joseph had no problem before the revelation was made that God had his hand on him. You see, Deborah has no problem. You have no problem. Mary has no problem. Elizabeth has no problem. Paul has no problem. Nobody has a problem. Sarah has no problem. Abraham has no problem until it is revealed that God has his hand on somebody. See, 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 much of the time when you're wandering around not knowing where you're going, the enemy does not come after you because the enemy does not have time to waste on folk who don't know who they are. But God help you. The moment time meets eternity and the revelation is now evident that you are the gifted one of God. Uh, that's when the enemy comes after you because he can't do anything with the gift of God while God has the gift in Mosterion. But once he reveals the gift in the gifted, then all hell breaks loose. Uh, I don't have to put any obstacles in your way when you're on the wrong road. But when you get on the right road, here come the obstacles. Oh, I feel God in this house. Uh, touch your neighbor and say, I'll go if you bring the anointing. Amen. It, it, it's... it's it's critical to understand this because uh, many times we want to be great in situations that don't warrant greatness. Because it's easy to have an excessive amount of strength in a weak situation. But there is no glory for God for you to have an excessive amount of strength in a weak situation. This is why the power of God is proven when you realize this can't be me, but this has to be God to get us out of these circumstances. Oh, a powerful woman understands that I can come even regarded as second class and still be the anointed first person in a second situation. Oh, I wish you'd understand this. I don't have to get ugly because you don't think much of me. 
because I've got God with me and that will make the difference. Oh, I got to talk. Let me, let me go to work here. I got to go to work. It's, it's critical now. When I, I looked at her name and, and, and her name means industry, it means patience, it means sagacity and usefulness. And of course, it's a name for a maid servant or for a, for a nurse maid, actually. And, and it's interesting that they give us no background about her. They, they give us no background. They don't tell us anything about where she's come from and who her family is. She just shows up on the scene without any genealogy, nothing to indicate why she was chosen. Now, here is the personal touch. She is the wife of Lapidus. And that's the only personal touch she gives. This introduces now something else. She has no natural children. And of course, England's got its Margot. We've got, uh, we've got France, it's Joan of Arc, and now Israel's got Deborah. Doesn't say anything about the man. Now, one of the things that's difficult is to be anointed gifted by God and you have to deal with people who are close to you and sometimes people who are close to you don't like the fact that God has his hand on you like he does now, I'm going to thread you here real carefully. I didn't actually want to just deal with womanhood. I wanted more to deal with personhood. Because I think oftentimes we have got to get away from categorizing ability by gender. Now, and the only personal touch now is she has married to Lapidith. Now, I think it was John Henry, he, 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 he said that Lapidith was a very weak man. And immediately he is suggesting that the only way that Deborah could express her strength is to live with a weak man. <laughs> now I have to understand this, that if God has his hand on you, then God will prepare the environment in which you will function. Very critical to do this. And because somebody is strong as a woman, it means more than anything she's looking for compatibility in a man. I, I want you to notice now there's a difference between compatibility and compromise. Because the more you have to compromise, the less compatible you are. Because you compromise, it does not mean you've changed your mind. What it means is you have decided to put up with something that you really don't want to deal with. Are you hearing me now? If God then is going to deal with the environment in which the gifted are placed, then God has to give somebody who is compatible to the strength of the gift. This does not make the individual weak. This just simply means God chose 
what was most compatible to the star that he's going to use. And it doesn't matter whether that star is a woman or a man. If the star in the family is the woman, God will provide someone who is compatible to her ability to express the anointing that God gave. That doesn't make him weak. Oh, I wish somebody talked to me tonight. That gives him a strength of discernment. I didn't come in here to compete with your anointing, but I came in here to facilitate who you are. Uh, when people come in your life, they shouldn't come in your life simply because of who you are. They should come in your life thinking who you can become. If they come in thinking who you can become, they'll add to your life. If they come for what you already are, they're coming to take from your life. Oh, I wish God had. That doesn't make him weak. Oh, I'm already upset. It upsets me. Because he has discerned who God has his hand on. You don't want to be close to somebody who has not discerned that God has his hand on you. One of our problems is we allow our flesh to select what our spirits ought to choose. I'm trying my best to behave, you know I am. When God put his hand on her for the times, he had to equip her with the situation by which she could work. So now, if she is an aggressive woman anointed by God, then she does not need an aggressive man controlled by his flesh. Because then what we'll have is a lot of compromise, but no compatibility. Ooh. If you have the strength to handle the business of the family, then you ought to be allowed to. If you, have the, if you have the strength to be the alpha dog in the family, then you ought to be allowed to. Because as long as God is leading you, and you are leading who's following, then you're all within the parameters of what God would have. But the anointed must always understand that there are people I have to be careful with because there are some folk who cannot live in the shadow of my anointing. And in order to control me, they will reduce me so that they can be on top of me when God has raised me up for such a time as this. Ooh, I feel the Spirit of God here. I, I don't want to get in any trouble here. See, it's a, a Lapidus. Why do we want to make him weak? Because strength begins with discernment. And knowing how to behave begins with discernment and sagacity. And if God has raised her up for such a time as this, and if Barak can recognize it, then surely we want the man in the house to recognize it. Sometimes we got to pray for the man in the house to recognize what folk in the street already know. Amen. Uh, give somebody a high five and say, I, I need him to know my spirit. I don't want to uh, uh, maybe I just should preach it <laughs> like, like, see, see one of the things that go wrong with male and female some things go wrong with us and even in the church yeah even in church oh. 
is that we fail to seek spiritual unity with some. Uh, it begins in Genesis because obviously there is a social side, there's a spiritual side. And when God, God, God figured that Adam would soon ask, because Adam is naming the animals, he's naming two. Everybody's got two. It's two. And, and pretty soon, you knew he would come to some kind of intellectual uh, assessment <laughs> that everybody around here has two, and I only have you. So God now looks at the man and says, it's not good for the man to be alone. Now notice this. You told me that all I need is God. But God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. Now my question to God is, how could the man be alone if you're there? Are you with me? How can he be alone if God is there? But what God is saying, no, uh-uh. I know you all testify, Jesus is my husband and Jesus is my wife. But uh-uh, uh-uh, no, uh-uh. I'll provide your husband, I'll provide your wife, but I'm not climbing up in the bed with you holding you in the middle of the night. I... So what God did was, he made a help me. The, 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 the Hebrew there is, he gave him somebody who was suitable to him. Now suitable is critical here because suitability means that you have to have someone who is on your level. Because having someone who is on your level means you're not alone. Which means you can have someone who is not on your level and still be alone. I'd rather be alone alone than be alone with somebody. Now, suitability must mean compatibility. Because then we fit and not fight. Oh, it's critical here, it's critical. But, but most of us don't go spiritual when we're seeking to be with someone. See, I, I just, that's why I want to deal with Joseph, because I want to deal with personhood. Because I'm about to suggest something in a minute. For instance, if I'm going to take you out, I am going to put the best suit on that I have, I am going to pull out of my driveway in the best car that I have, and if I don't think it's good enough, I'll rent one. I'm going to a restaurant that I know, and I'm going to call them, tell them I'm coming, and I'll, I'll see you when I get there. And so when I walk through the door, everybody is at attention. 
and come out of the back hugging me, chef coming up to the table, how are you doing, hope everything is fine. Because I am going to try to impress you with my persona, my charisma. I'm going to order for you. Parlez-vous français? I'm going to impress you. You're not coming out of that house for about an hour trying to get ready because you're going to fix up. But the baddest thing you got to just, oh, just working it up, just working it. Just. Oh, I don't think I'll wear this, I'll wear this. Uh, now, a few weeks later, I am going to be arguing why can't I find a woman who doesn't want me for my money? And a few weeks later, you're going to be arguing why can't I find a man who doesn't want me for my body? But I only flaunted my money and you only flaunted your body and I don't know nothing about your mind. In order to find somebody suitable for the anointing that God has placed on you, you got to go spiritual when you deal with folk you want to live with. Oh, I wish somebody would help me tonight. Woo, give, give somebody a high five. Say, I'll go if you bring the anointing. It's critical here because many times we end up fighting in the ring and in the corner because we have selected based on physical pulchritude and financial capacities and don't connect spiritually so now that God has anointed me before the foundation of the world I have put extra burden on my anointing because I have selected someone who doesn't have a clue that I am more special than being a physical pulchritude. It's more to an anointed person than their body. It's more to an anointed person than a few dollars in the bank. Because when God gets ready to use you, everybody around you has to know that God has his hand on me for a purpose. Oh, I wish somebody would hear me. I wish somebody would hear me. The, the power of Deborah is that she was not in the shadow of a man. Yes. When God suspended a gift for you, before the foundation of the world. Please don't tell me that all God wanted to do was get you married. Somehow, we have suspended our lives and put a hold on our gifts just wanting to be married. Please don't tell me that the only purpose in your life is to have a man because if so your life will always be determined 
limited and restricted. by whether or not you have a man. I wish I could talk to you. When God laid his hand on Deborah, he put in her life someone who was not going to hinder her from her purpose. Most of the time, we choose folk in our lives who we have to fight and step over to even flow in the purpose of God. We need to stop and say to the Lord, show me who I am, show me what your purpose is, and then direct somebody in my life who will not try to blank it out, but will stand aside and let you use me. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Give somebody a high five. Say, I got the anointing. I'm anointed. There's greater purpose. Because once you decide that this is all your purpose, then that's all you will pursue. And you will seek to get involved out of who you decide someone else is and not seek your involvement based on who you know you are. I don't know much I deal with that. So you end up settling without suitability so now most of your life is lived on compromise because there is no compatibility because you had to connect more things than just bodies in order to become one you gotta connect intellect you gotta connect sagacity and you gotta connect spirituality. I need somebody with me who is compatible spiritually, intellectually, and we can figure out the rest of it. I don't know much I go there. It's critical to understand this that you have to see yourself in greater light than just sitting here waiting on a man. I'll be doing God's business. I'll be expressing God's sagacity. This is your position. I'll be expressing my anointing. I'll be moving in the power of what God has given me. And anybody I intimidate, I don't need to have anyway. Oh, I feel like having church here. Because when God has his hand on you, you're going to intimidate somebody. But whoever you intimidate ain't suitable for you anyway. Because the person who will not be intimidated is the person who knows God has his hand on you. And he'll say, just go on, go on and do it, honey. Go on and do it. Go on and get it done. You, you bad, honey. You, you just bad. Do your thing. I'll be home when you get back, baby. Take somebody's hand and say, you're too gifted just to be looking for a man. You're too gifted just to want a man. You, you've got too much gifts to wait for somebody to come by and bless you with something. What they decide to give you, the devil is a liar. I get whatever I want. It's critical to grasp this. 
It's critical to understand that you are just, you're more than pripping and fixing up to be somebody's playmate. When God has his hand on you, you supersede circumstances and situations. When God has his hands on you, you don't want to be in a situation where somebody's cutting your legs off and cutting your hands off and talking you down and talking you any kind of way. And those of you who have escaped the first time, why are you trying to jump up on it the second time without letting God direct it? You gotta come in the knowledge of, of who you are. Understand your value and your worth. Anybody then who does not choose from the point of view of the spirituality of God. And I'm telling you, men are predators. Yes. And believe it or not, women choose who they will allow to victimize them. They choose. Women decide. It's a head thing more with a woman. See, a man can come into the house and have no intentions of doing anything sexual. And something just came in the window and he just went sexual. But if a woman releases herself, she thought about it for three weeks. She thought about it, she thought about it, she thought about it and said, the next time I'm gonna do this. The normal woman that is, thought about it. It takes more time for her to decide to release herself because she believes Anytime she does, she's giving up more than he is. The anointed woman has to take more in focus than simply womanhood. Because when God has his hand on her, she becomes a vessel that is not just seeking the gratification of her earthly purpose, but she is linking earthly with heavenly. I want, you, I want you just to notice God. For instance, when God put his hand on Joseph and gave him vision, <laughs> it didn't matter how much pain his father had when he thought Joseph was dead. It didn't matter because God put his hand on Joseph for a purpose. When God puts his hand on you for a purpose, it doesn't matter how many people don't like you. 
God doesn't take his hand off you so that some folk can like you. When God has his hand on you for a purpose, his purpose is so important to him that he will take the wrong people out of your life if that's going to stop him from using you the way he wants to use you. And I'm here to tell you right now, you're holding on to some folk that you know are bad for your purpose. And because God gave you the gift before the foundation of the world, if you won't let him go, he's going to take him out of your life. Oh, I'm here to tell you, he's taking some out right now. Right now, tonight, he's getting ready to move some folk out of your life. And he don't care how bad you're going to hurt because he's going to tell you, I didn't tell you to choose them in the first place. I wanted you to get somebody in your life. that would acknowledge I have a hand on you. Ooh, I feel the Spirit of God here tonight. I refuse to believe that Lapidus was weak. That's what I'm discussing here. Lapidus was compatible. And when God puts somebody in your life who cooperates with your anointing, that doesn't make them weak. Tell your girlfriends, get out of my business. Because God put somebody in my life who's compatible to my anointing. Tell the preachers, get out of your business talking about weak men, wife running everything. If she can run it, let her run it. Oh, I've touched some man to say, I have the anointing. <laughs> I have the anointing. That's what I bring to the table. I bring anointing to the house. That's what I bring up in here. You bring the money, I bring the anointing and see what we do something. Ooh, I feel the spirit of God here. Amen. It, it is serious then. It is serious. Because most of us have been hindered by who we chose. Most of you, that is. Because it takes a certain amount of recklessness to understand the significance of God having his hand on you. you got to watch your choices. Because one of the great ways to devaluate you is to get the enemy right up beside you. Night and day. See, that's where the enemy wants to be. In the person closest to you. So the enemy has his eye on you every day, adjusting and readjusting the temperature of your attitude every day, controlling your spirit every day bringing you up, bringing you down, talking you down, telling you what you can't do, telling you how it can't work every day. So you have to be careful before you open the floodgates of your life to select very carefully who's coming and never choose when you're hurting. reach for nobody hurting because you're going to get strong again and when you get strong again you're going to say oh my god what have I done because now I'm ready to take on the enemies of the Lord and I got an enemy right here in my house I, 
I better go on. What time, what time is it? This it is critical here because, uh, because, because, because now, now Deborah is the mother of Israel. She has no of her own children, but she's in charge of everybody. So now God has given her a prophetic place and a prophetic strength. It doesn't matter to God when he anoints you about the oppositions that are here, there, or anywhere. Because now you've got to go through it now. All of us in here are chastened by our choices. And even in the middle of the chastening, we end up having to pick up our bed and walk. Because God does not release you from your purpose because you've made a selection out of your flesh. In fact, he saw it when he anointed you. And I don't care how bad your battle is, you cannot walk away from your purpose saying that I messed up in this choice. Can't walk away. You can't walk away because he prefigured the choice you would make and he still gave you the anointing. See, a lot of people make a big mistake now because I'm having trials in this area of my life. I'm going to give up this area. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. No, no. When God selects you and we all have included in our lives certain things that had hindered that hinder us thinking it was good for us because we chose out of our flesh yes. sometimes we just did unwise things that led us into things that we just can't walk out can't get away from but now while we're having that inner turmoil we're trying to free ourselves from what God has called us to do. Oh, oh, don't do that. <laughs> you got to labor in what God has called you to do in spite of the difficulties you have brought into the situation. And now you have to go through it until the Lord makes a move to release it. But your faithfulness in holding on to your calling will give you the victory in spite of all that's dragging around you. Now you got to say to yourself, I want to please God so bad that I'm going to do whatever it takes in spite of the situation I put myself in. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. And you got to tell the devil, I've lost a lot of peace, I've lost a lot of joy, I've lost a lot of happiness, but I will not lose my anointing. I will do the will of God in the middle of all of my struggles, but victory shall be mine. Sometimes you got to drag folk who don't like you, live with folk who try to subvert you, but you stand up in the midst of it and declare in your spirit, I'm still going to do the will of God and God will fix it after a while oh I feel like having church is it church time yet oh I feel the Holy Ghost touch the man and say I have the anointing touch two people and say I have the anointing I have the anointing and when I get back home I'm going to walk in my anointing and my purpose oh God I feel it One of the things, I'm going to keep you too much longer. 
one of the great battles and one of the things that we have to understand is oftentimes we like the comfort of the next level and here again God has to keep moving us into the face of our purpose because there are certain levels he takes you to the pit now that's Joseph again because you're a dreamer and it is here then that God grasps you because what God does and I can go to Paul now is he apprehends you to apprehend what he apprehended you for are you following me now how he translates the fact that he has had his hand on you before the foundation of the world is he gives you vision and all of a sudden in the normalcy of your life here comes a supernatural vision of God that grabs you Deborah had to have had a prophetess had to have had an anointing that grabbed her now she has to grab what the anointing grabbed her for. Uh, uh, God has grabbed you with a vision. And now you have to grab what the vision grabbed you to do. But God is not the only one trying to grab you. Some folks have come up in your life and they ain't got nothing to do with God. Here is where the pit comes. And you're in the pit, but you can't be pitiful. Because no matter how low the pit is, the palace must always be on your mind. I have been called for a reason. So now even though I'm in this pit, I still have the palace on my mind. The vision has to be so strong that no matter what your circumstances are you cannot release your vision because of your circumstance I got to go through whatever I got to go through because if God promised it he's going to bring it to pass through me oh I'm gonna take it a little further once God sets it in you you can't get away from it you have tried because if it's not coming to pass and a lot of op opposition sometimes you want to release yourself from the thing that's driving you and it's not coming to pass Lord because of this I got all these enemies because of this I got all this trial because of this I got all these people against me because of this I got to fight like this because of this I got to hurt like this because you have put your hands on me I got to go through all this well the answer is simple if you have to go through this then what I got on the other side of this must be some kind of special because the devils didn't come out until they knew I had my hand on you. You got to watch who you let in your life because God is getting ready to release your gift and the enemy don't want it to happen. Oh, I'm getting ready to close. I feel God in here shake somebody's hand and say, I got the anointing. It is interesting now that in the middle of this battle, where the devil is trying to wipe the children of Israel out. 
and God has raised up a woman who has nothing but anointing and wisdom I want you to see this in your mind here is a man who is a leader of an army walking up to a woman who he has discovered has God's hand on her I want you to touch somebody and say you need somebody in your life that God has his hand on you need to be somebody that God has his hand on there are 900 chariots there are a hundred thousand folk against the few folk that Israel has there's 10,000 against a hundred thousand now there is no way we're going to defeat a hundred thousand warriors who have held us for 20 years unless God sent some help can I talk to you for a minute I feel like having a little church touch somebody real quick and say you're the help God is sending touch somebody else and say you're the difference in your house on your job in your school in your community come on we might as well have church you're the difference God sent you to woman that I lose just to stir your gift oh not to get it honey you already had it it's time to stir it uh, Barak realized if I'm going to have victory I got to have anointing I don't have any anointing anywhere around me but the anointing is in this woman shake your neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off and say an anointed woman can defeat the enemy on every level I feel I feel like having a little church in here oh, I feel the Holy Ghost touch your neighbor say neighbor it's alright to be cute but cute ain't destroying no enemy anointing destroys the enemy it's alright to be fine with a pretty hairdo but sometimes you got to get ugly get down on your knees and call on the name of the Lord sometime you got to move in the power of the spirit and forget how you look this morning but the devil's been messing with my children and I need a breakthrough in the house my clothes might not match and my hair might not be together but I'm moving in the power of the spirit Barak said to her I will not go unless you go with me because what I need right now is an anointed woman to walk with me touch your neighbor real quick and say what the world needs is more anointed women anointed women raising children will not raise us by Sama Ben Laden anointed women raising children will bring a Martin Luther King up any day anointed women raising children will bring folk in our lives that'll make our lives better anointed women walking in the workplace will break the yoke of the enemy that's trying to suppress us anointed women moving in the church will keep the unanointed off the preacher I feel like preaching anointed women moving in the Sunday school will send the power word I feel like preaching in here tonight shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off and tell them the devil is about to be defeated in my neighborhood because I'm not showing off my Mugler I'm not showing off my Christian Dior I'm not showing off my Jennings my Chanel I'm not showing off my Mercedes but I'm getting ready to display my anointing I feel like preaching in here that's what a leading godly woman does she walks in a room and she walks with the Lord ahead of her and the power of the Holy Spirit moves when she moves 
whenever she goes, there's an aura about her that folk just can't figure out. She ain't got a man, but she walk like she does. She ain't got a mouse, but she moves like she does. What's the secret of this woman? Anointing. She's so anointed. When she speaks, men stand up and listen. She's so anointed. When she moves, presidents have to call. She's so anointed that yokes just break before she asks. I feel like preaching in here. I feel the Holy Ghost. She is so anointed that folk don't play with her. Don't talk to her any kind of way because they know there's something special about this woman of God. Take somebody's hand. Say, neighbor, it's breakthrough time. It's 10,000 against 100,000. But anointing, even out the odds, I don't care how much trouble you are in. An anointed woman makes the difference. Let me pray over the pocketbook. Let me pray over the checkbook. Let me pray over this sickness. Let me pray over this situation. I feel the Holy Ghost. Tell your neighbor, don't make a decision until I anoint it. Don't you move until I pray. That's the kind of women we need. Women who can stand up and say, the Lord told me, victory shall be mine. Don't go without me, because I have the anointing. Touch three people real quick and say, I'll anoint you. I'll get you through it. I'll get you out of trouble. I'll get your boy back home. I'll get your daughter back in. I'll get the job done. I'll get the money back. I'll get the door open. I'll get the way made. Don't go without me. Don't go without me. Because I'll make the difference. I feel the devil shaking tonight. I feel him getting nervous. Because we're about to release 10,000 women back into the street. All stirred up and ready to tell the devil I've come to make a difference. I've come to even the odds. I've come to tear your kingdom down. Give somebody a high five. Say, let's go home and tear that city up. Let's take it for God. Let's break the yoke. Let's set folk free. Let's decapitate the enemy. Anointed! Anointed! What a difference! I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. Give somebody a high five. And say, not only was she anointed, but she was a praiser. She was a warrior. She was a worshiper. She was a dancer. She was a creator. She was a poet. I feel like preaching in here. Do I have any gifts in the house? Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, all of mine are anointed. I'm getting ready to use my anointing. I'm getting ready to set the devil on fire. I'm getting ready to break yokes all around me. Because I.
it makes a difference. When the Spirit of the Lord is moving, controls tempers, controls attitudes, controls the atmosphere, everything around you. I want you to take somebody's hand real quick. I feel anointing right now. I feel it. I feel it vibrating. Through this place. Sometimes just by yourself. But anointed. Anointed destroys yokes. The anointing heals and cleanses the mind and the spirit. Anointing discerns the evils. Anointed. I want you to touch somebody, hold them. I feel your presence from here. I feel God renewing you right now. There's more to your life than just trying to get married. I dare to begin to pray that God move you in the power of your anointing. Your first calling is not marriage, honey. That ain't your first calling. That's a part of your life. But it's not your first calling. Your first calling is that purpose that God called you for in that vision. Every gift that he has given, you should work it until it comes to pass. Every dream that he gave you. I'm praying for somebody in here tonight that is gifted but they have suspended their gift. Somebody came in their life 15 years. Now they're gone. And you're coming up out of the pit. Coming up out of the pit. But even though you're being sold to Potiphar's house, even though you're being sold, tattered clothes, blood-stained handkerchiefs, Potiphar is looking at you and he sees the anointing in you still. Don't have the money I used to have. Don't have the friends I used to have. But I still have my anointing. Had to move out of the big house. I live in an apartment now. Don't drive what I used to drive. I'm not pampered now. Everything I have on, I've had to get it for myself. But I don't have a bad attitude because I'm still anointed and God's going to use you to make a difference in someone else's life when you wonder who's going to make a difference in yours God will use you to bless somebody else in the middle of the turmoil of a rough marriage God will use you to lift somebody else when you yourself are broken because with your level of anointing even when you're low you're still higher than most folk ah, your level of anointing even when you're sad you still got more joy than most people your level of anointing even in the middle of a battle 
You got more victory than most. Leading lady, even when you're tears, even in the middle of your crying, you bless others to dry their tears. Deborah, we can't go without you. Deborah, we won't move without you. Deborah, the whole army is waiting for you. For unless you come, it will not be true that one can chase a thousand and two ten thousand. Deborah, if you come, twenty dollars will become twenty million. Deborah, if you come, what was going to close will open again. Deborah, if you come, what is sure defeat is going to end up with Sisera's head in a basket. And do we care? Whether it's a woman or not, no, we don't. All we want is the victory that God's going to give through you. I want you to look at somebody before I pray and say, everyone is depending on your anointing. Look at your sister and sister, we need your anointing. We need your strength. We need your strength. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. We need your strength. Mm, we need your strength. We need your gift. We need you. We need what you've been through. We need you. We need you. We need you. Don't go home and quit. Don't you back up. Don't do that. We need you, we need you, we need you. We need you, we need you, we need you. Oh, oh I feel it here. I feel it, I feel it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every sister, every intellectual sister, yeah, every anointed sister. Every prophetic sister, every powerful sister, every financially brilliant sister, every sister, spread out your anointing now and send a whole army of Deborahs to every community that we have come out of. Send Deborah back to churches all over Texas, all over America, and let that anointing walk in the room and make the difference. Send Deborah home tonight. Send her home on Sunday. Send her home to the church that the enemy was trying to destroy. And let Deborah make the difference. Send her home tonight to a child that's losing his mind. To a job that's about to fall apart. To a country that's in trouble. And let Deborah lead the charges. Lord, let Deborah break the yoke of the enemy, tear down the stronghold, defeat the devil in his path, and I claim it in the name of Jesus. I say, send a double anointing out here. Send it out here tonight. Send it, send it, send it. Send it, send it, send it. Anoint, anoint, anoint. Anoint in the name of Jesus. Somebody loose your hands, stretch them up to God, and say, I receive it right now. I receive it right now. I receive it. In the future, I would love this channel to be an over the top platform, getting a play button, of course, and reaching a wider audience. And my aim is to point people back to God because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We are in the last and evil days. 
Let's keep our ears open. In conclusion, I need your help. Your seed is important whether you're new to this channel or not. Liking the next video that I upload on any platform underneath Catch My Praise. Giving credit to where you get your sources also helps. Your generous gifts of any amount are welcome. Catch up is always open under Catch My Praise. Why am I doing this? Because it takes a lot to do a lot. Thank you for listening. Until then, believe it, reach it, catch it, here only on the Catch My Praise Network.